Wow, this has been one sequel after another, hasn't it? Hey friends, welcome back to Cineclub. So I saw Sicario the Day of the Soldado and I still don't know why they called it that. So Sicario the Day of the Soldado is considered a spin-off, not necessarily a sequel or a prequel to Denis Villeneuve's Sicario. It's really almost impossible to place it in the timeline except for the fact that Matt, played by Josh Brolin at one point, tells Alejandro, played by Benicio del Toro, that this time there are no rules. So it does imply that this might be after the first movie. But the general premise is that the United States considers the cartels now an actual terrorist organization. That way they can actually meddle in and try to control it. And of course the government government doesn't want to get their hands dirty so they bring in Matt, played by Josh Brolin, and Josh Brolin needs to bring in his best Sicario, which is of course Benicio del Toro. Alejandro wants in because he wants revenge for his family who were murdered by the cartels, specifically the cartel leader Carlos Reyes, which is the one they're trying to go after because if they can get to him, they can get to pretty much everybody else. Now let's talk about the things I really did like. One of my biggest fears when this movie was announced is that it was going to be a completely different take on a really great original story. Denis Villeneuve's style, thematics, and just the way he analyzes and shows you characters brings a lot to what a story can be. So if you would take him away from that and use the same characters for another purpose, it might have a completely different feel and I was basically worried that it would feel very, very different. That being said, I think they did a really excellent job in maintaining the tone and maintaining the style of Sicario. The cinematography is almost as identical, maybe not as breathtaking as the first one, but it's still pretty much up there. The script was written by the same screenwriter, which is Taylor Sheridan, and I thought he did an excellent job. One of the things he does that I love very much is that the dialogue is about the essentials, what we're doing in the mission, the information and data that you need, but there's still so much set in silences and in some of the movements and pauses that the characters have. A lot of things are set in those silences and I thought he did an excellent job in this movie as well. The score, which was one of my favorite things about the original and I think probably what gives it that ominous and sort of like gritty feel, was still very similar. They did an excellent job. Johan Johansson passed away before he could do this one. I'm not even sure if he was going to do this one, but instead they found someone who collaborated with him and the first one I think she was supposed to be the soloist cello player. I might be wrong, but I think that's who she is. I'm not going to try to mention her name because she is Icelandic and I this is her name. So she composed the score. There's still many themes that are pretty much identical to the original one. I think the one Johansson titled The Beast is untouched and they use it a lot in the movie, which is, you know, basically the cellos growling and intensifying slowly. And I mean, if that doesn't scare you, I don't know why it will. But she paid tremendous homage to him and I think it worked really, really well. It's not overbearing. It just sets a tone and a mood without being incredibly melodic or in your face. Josh Brolin and Benicio Del Toro totally carried the movie. It is the relationship between these characters. You can tell that there's a bond between them, but when things go down, you know that they're gonna pull their separate ways if they have to. And it's very much that link between them and that bond that moves the story along. And now moving to some of the things that I didn't really hate, but I didn't really like a lot either. Speaking of the characters, Josh Brolin's character, which we know is this just like despicable man who does what he has to do and has no problem getting his hands dirty in order to get the job done. He's still very much the same way but they kind of humanized him a little bit more maybe because he's more of a central character now than in the other one and while that's not necessarily bad that's definitely character development I feel like maybe they did this sort of to like lighten up the movie a little bit in comparison to the other one. As for Benicio's character, I was hoping to get a lot more out of this character because they kind of made it look like it was more about his story. And we all know that his story is that he's looking for revenge for his family and they were murdered by the cartels. But it doesn't really go anywhere apart from that. We already knew this information from the first movie and now his character just didn't really have much growth. Or even like a very concrete resolution. In the first one, he gets to exact his revenge. And in this one, it's kind of left a little bit more open. In fact, a lot of things are kind of left open. I love the original premise. I love the idea that the government is involved and that we have to make it look like they're not involved. But there were like sort of like small parts of the story that were left loose. And I think overall it's because they set it up for a third one. Therefore, this movie feels a little bit incomplete. The problem is you're constantly comparing it to the first one. And while it is incredibly similar in terms of style and the sound and the atmosphere, it just doesn't have a certain wholesome 
completion to it. There's a very complete resolution to Villeneuve's movie. So much so that you don't feel like you need to know anything else about these characters. You understand that the story goes on, but this is all I needed to know to understand the message and understand the situation that's going on in the Mexican-US border. With this one, it was like, I already knew pretty much everything you were trying to tell me. It's just maybe a little bit more action, maybe one or two new characters, but in its core, the story is exactly the same. You're not adding much else. What it ends up feeling is like we created a sequel because a movie did so well and not because the story organically takes you to a new chapter. Like I think it was pretty clear when Villeneuve made it, he was not planning on a sequel, a prequel, or a spinoff or anything. So this movie in that sense feels a little bit forced. But other than that, I truly enjoyed it and I think I would give it a 7 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Let me know what did you think about Sicario Day of the Soldado. You can let me know in the comments section down below or if you want, you can find me pretty much anywhere. I'm Cineclub channel on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you really enjoyed it. I always appreciate it. And if you like movie reviews and anything related to movies, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent week and I will see you on our next movie date. Bye.